Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Back with uh, talking about Absalom and David. And uh, one of the verses that uh, comes to mind because of David's kind of shoddy parenting is Proverbs 22, 6, which says, Train up a child in the way he should go. And even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Okay. Uh, and Solomon, as we know, is, is David's other son. Sometimes we have to listen to our children to get the big picture. Now, I remember as, as my wife and I, as Patty and I were uh, you know, raising our kids and our, our son decided that he wanted to be a pastor, he would sit in the back seat as we're driving around and right here in Lake Havasu. And if Patty and I were getting into a uh, discussion, uh, he would start preaching to us what we should be doing. And so that's, that's where, um, uh, that's why I went back to Solomon to talk to David about Absalom because uh, David was really an absentee father. He was more interested in wars and concubines and, and uh, the result, as with any absentee fatherhood, was disobedient children. His, his, the children, if you look at Amnon from yesterday, who raped his half-sister, and Absalom, who took revenge on the rape, but nobody would talk about it, and then he ran away. Um, it just, it, it's not good to not train a child in the way they should go, and, and this is what we have to train our, train our children with. Uh, David was uh, remiss in that, and he's, living, he's seeing what's happening with Absalom. So Absalom goes away. He goes to Geshur uh, and sees his father-in-law, and he has to stay there for two years. He can't come back. Well, one of his advisors, Joab, in, in 2 Samuel 14, 20 through 24, goes to David to convince David to let him, uh, to let Absalom return. And Absalom returns, and he, can't, he still can't see his father. He's, he's, um, David says, bring him here, but he, don't let him come into my courts. Okay. So later on, in, at the end of chapter 14, uh, Joab went, verse 33, Joab went to the king and told him, and he summoned Absalom. So he came to the king and bowed himself on his face to the ground before him, and the king kissed Absalom. So David, who actually agonized to see Absalom, after four or five years, finally gets to see him. Okay. But now Absalom goes back to being that uh, belligerent child. And chapter 15 of 2 Samuel starts by showing how Absalom wants to take over his father's uh, kingdom. And it says in verses 1 through 12 of chapter 15, after this, Absalom got himself a chariot and horses and 50 men to run before him. And Absalom used to rise early and stand beside the way of the gate. And when any man had a dispute to come before the king for judgment, Absalom would call to him and say, from what city are you? And when he said, your servant is of such and such a tribe in, in Israel, Absalom would say to him, see, your claims are good and right, but there is no man designated by the king to hear you. Then Absalom would say, oh, that I were judge in this land. Then every man with a disputer cause might come to me and I would give him justice. And whenever a man came near to pay homage, homage to him, he would put out his hand and take hold of him and kiss him. This Absalom did to all of Israel who came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. His father finally went to let him come in. And Absalom is trying to uh, take over the kingdom. David ends up fleeing in, chapter, in verse 13 of chapter 15. Uh, fleeing to the Mount of Olives and weeping as he went. So my challenge getting back to training up a child in the way he should go. Speak to your family about God, Calvary, and his will in your lives. 
Use scripture as your guide because we know that if you read and apply scripture, God will change your life. And then if you remember 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. Pray for your family without ceasing and teach them the word of God. Have a great day, Calvary.